Although the neighbouring states of Victoria and South Australia share a common broad gauge of 5 feet 3, the standardisation of the Melbourne Adelaide Main Line is scheduled to take place in the very near future. In May 1994, three days of steam activity brought South Australian Railways Pacific No. 621 Duke of Edinburgh into the state of Victoria to team up with Victorian Railways locomotives working out from Melbourne. Here, the double-headed train arrives at Nil in Victoria for overnight stabling. The next morning, number 621, coupled to Victorian Railways R-Class 464, number 671, heads east from Nil through the central Victorian Wheatlands towards Horsham. This is the first time a South Australian steam locomotive has ever worked east into Victoria, and the imminent gauge conversion means that it will also be the last. Here, the pair arrive at the country town of Horsham for refreshment and photographs. The town's residents greet the steam interloper with as much enthusiasm as if it were the Duke of Edinburgh personally. Both locomotives make an enthusiastic departure from Mertoa. As well as locomotives from both states, the train has a mixture of coaches from both railways as well, plus an additional open wagon tagged to the rear. The excursion draws into Stowell, where passengers will alight for the obligatory barbecue lunch, as much a part of Australian steam specials as the locomotives themselves.
The undulating nature of the route across the wheat fields is very typical of Australian railways and of central Victoria in particular. The pair are seen here racing between Ararat and Beaufort. The very British style station at Beaufort is soon to lose its already sparse passenger service as part of the regaging programme. And if mainline steam should ever pass this way again, it'll be a standard gauge locomotive, probably from New South Wales. In that magical evening light that only Australia can provide, both locomotives do their best to outpace traffic on the adjacent Western Highway. Once at Ballarat, the light is even better. This magnificent signal gantry, out of use pending modernization, still spans the tracks. As does this train shed, signal box, and conventional crossing gates. All the best in British railway tradition. But the diesel is a 1952 built General Motors B-Class Coco, a thoroughbred American machine in all but builder's license, and the double-ended streamlined cab which is unique to Victorian railways. The sun doesn't always shine in Australia, and a damp morning works wonders for the smoke effects. The locos have been switched round, and the R-Class now leaves. She's one of 70 Glasgow-built machines delivered from North British between 1951 and 54. The R's were never really allowed to show their full potential, as they were relegated to secondary lines from day one, due to simultaneous delivery of B-class diesels. While the R is turned, the Duke shunts coaches at Bacchus Marsh. Four of the R-Class survive, two for specials, one in Melbourne's Newport Museum and one, another static example, at Bendigo.
While all this shunting is going on, the connecting special from Melbourne Spencer Street station is en route behind K-Class 280 number K183. The K-Class were a highly successful lightweight mixed traffic loco, the first ten of which emerged from Newport workshops in 1922. The design was so successful that construction continued until 1946, when over 50 were available for traffic. The tour then splits, with R761 taking her train over the secondary route from Ballarat to Maryborough, rare trackage for a steam special. After turning at Maryborough, the big 464 heads back towards Ararat. Australian secondary lines look much like main lines, except that the undulations are more noticeable. The other half of the train arrives back at Ararat from the west, behind number 621, running 10 to 1st. In rapidly fading light, the Victorian Railway's R and K-Class locos now head their own stock back to Melbourne and their base at Newport. The next morning, the Duke begins the long trek back to Adelaide. Believe it or not, this is the village of Great Western, and the train is passing under Brunel Street Bridge. At Dimboola, there's time for some photos and a check over the engine. She's one of ten light Pacifics which emerged from South Australian Railway's Islington workshops in Adelaide in 1938. She worked mainly the Adelaide area suburban services and secondary passenger services on branch lines, though in practice could be found all over the system. Withdrawal of the class was complete by 1969 and only one other example survives. 
stuffed and mounted in Adelaide's Mile End Museum. Number 621 is now back on home rails, having passed off the Victorian Railways network at Border Town. This is home territory for this class, and number 621 will have passed this way many times previously, both before and after preservation. But once the gauge conversion process is complete, she'll have to find somewhere else to stretch her unusual Baker valve gear. As dusk falls, number 621 still has over 100 kilometres to run as she crosses the Murray Bridge over the river of the same name. Gauge conversion must mean an uncertain future, not only for 621, but also for the broad gauge lines of Victoria and South Australia.